Welcome to another Electronics on the Floor, where I'll give you five reasons not to use printed circuit boards when you're building electronic projects. There's some people that say, if it's not on a printed circuit board, then it's not worth building. Tell me who's right. Dave too, here, David too, reckons that he should design and make a, board, a PCB for everything. Yep. I disagree, and here's the reasons why. First of all, it takes too long. Before you even put the components on, you first of all have to design a board layout. Then you've got to find a method of applying the resist to the copper of the board, and then chuck it into the etching solution. All that can take a long time. Time better spent in actually soldering the parts on. Of course you could get the board done overseas, but then you're waiting for several days, at the very minimum. If you're time limited and you want something up and going quickly, then a printed circuit board is definitely not the way to build it. Number two, both expensive and dirty. Expensive because of the extra equipment you need. You don't just need a bit of copper clad circuit board, a soldering iron and a few parts, but you need a lot of other things as well, including your chemicals, trays, agitators, design software, etc. All a lot more complicated and probably not worth it if you're in electronics as a leisure activity. And as for the dirty bit, well, I don't miss the ferrite chloride getting all over your clothes. It's impossible to get off. Number three, what if you want to modify the circuit? The circuit you built either doesn't work as expected or you've got some ideas for further improvements. Not a problem if you use a more flexible construction method. But with a circuit board, unless you're lucky, you're stuck. Etched printed circuit boards do not allow easy modification and thus experimentation. Therefore, they're only really good for a commercial product or a kit where you're not expecting the builder to modify it. Number four, using a printed circuit board isn't very flexible if your components happen to be of a different size. Especially if you're using salvaged components, the lead spacing may be two and a half, five millimeters or something in between. And if you've got a printed circuit board, especially one where you've drilled the holes, then the parts might not fit in very easily. Whereas with other construction methods, provided you don't compress everything in too much, then you've got a fair amount of flexibility. Number five, fault finding and measurement is a lot harder. Some connections you can't get at unless you go to the underside of the board. That means undoing screws, pulling out wires, pulling the whole thing apart. Whereas there's other construction methods where all components are reachable and you can measure voltages on any part of the circuit without you having to go underneath the board. In addition, if you need to make replacements, that's made easier as well. That's five good reasons not to use a printed circuit board. I'm sorry Dave 2, but I'm inclined to agree with Dave 1. I'm making him pay his dues, folks, by by making it up on Vera board or Proto board and he doesn't like it. That He's not happy. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> ah, young whippersnappers. Back to work, Dave. So what are your construction alternatives? You could just use a blank printed circuit board with the earthed parts of the components soldered straight to the board and small pads used to hold those that aren't earthed if you want some mechanical stability. Provided you keep leads short, this is a good approach for building circuits with discrete components. Here's one of my favourites. It just uses a single sided piece of circuit board material, but I've cut them into squares. You can use a hacksaw and mitre box for that. Another option is unclad matrix board. The holes are normally 2.5mm apart, so they'll accommodate most of your standard IC and component packages. You just solder the wires together underneath. I quite like this method of construction, especially if you're building projects with ICs or want things to look reasonably neat. The main shortcoming is like with printed circuit boards, you have to turn the board upside down in order to remove components. Slightly easier to solder to is the type of matrix board that has copper pads underneath. Note though that they're all individual, which permits maximum flexibility. Just be a bit careful with your soldering to ensure that pads are not accidentally shorted. 
Related to matrix board is strip board, where the underside of the board has copper strips connecting lines of holes together. It may be suitable for logic and audio circuits, but for RF, note that there's capacitance between the strips, so it's generally not recommended. If you do want to interrupt a strip, you can do so with a small drill bit held in the hand, around 3 or 4 millimetres. Here's something else I tried about 20 years ago. You can buy self-adhesive copper tape that can be soldered to. Altronics have started stocking it and it's $6.95 for a 15 metre roll. It's 5 millimetres wide. What I did was I applied this tape to cardboard, like from the side of a cardboard box, and was able to solder parts to it. Not so good for small ICs, but for larger discrete components it was fine. It was a very quick and easy way of building an electronic circuit. There's nothing to stop you combining different construction methods in the one project. Here's a case where there's an IC on a small piece of matrix board, which is mounted on a larger bit of blank circuit board that has been sawn into squares. In this case, it's a product detector and audio amplifier of a direct conversion receiver. Here's another example. In most cases, I'm using small squares of circuit board material, or what's sometimes called Manhattan style. Then, when that gets a bit too hard, like when ICs are used, I regress to the so-called dead bug construction. It looks ugly, but it's quick to build and easy to fault find. The project, by the way, is a phasing type SSB transceiver. The receiver is working to my satisfaction, but more work is needed on the transmitter. I've described a range of different electronic construction methods. Each has their pros and cons, but for the hobbyist, who's in their spare time building one-off projects, in most cases, something other than a printed circuit board will be the best approach.